So this is another um, tutorial for somebody on the Answer Hub. Uh, the person wanted to make a um, grenade that acts like real life. You know, you can pull the pin, hold it for as long as you want without the thing exploding, and then when you throw it, it's going to wait so many seconds and then do its damage. You don't want the thing exploding in your hand, and you don't want to throw the thing and have it never explode. So how can we go about creating this functionality? First thing I did here is I just created a blueprint class called grenade and I just threw in a little mesh here so this is just going to be our grenade obviously I don't have all the functionality that the original poster has but I think this will do for now so we're just going to leave this here for the moment and I'm going to go into my player character and we're going to start scripting the basic logic for actually like throwing this grenade so I'm going to pick a random keyboard event like spacebar and we're going to use this to actually spawn the grenade and then hold it for as long as we want and then after that once we've released it with this button here we'll be able to actually go into the grenade blueprint and tell it to wait for however long it wants to delay and then explode. So the first thing we want to do here is this is going to actually create the grenade so we're gonna say create or sorry spawn actor from class and the class we want right under here is gonna be our grenade class whatever you call it in the transform so this is the location that we're gonna put this grenade I'm going to be lazy and just basically drag in our cube mesh, which is what my player character looks like, the cube. So we have cubes and spheres here. And I'm going to get world location. Actually, even lazier. Get world transform. And we're just going to spawn this thing right where we are. And we want to make sure this always spawns, just because I don't feel like going through all the, you know, creating an actual place for it to spawn, like in somebody's hand or whatever. So we'll just make sure this always spawns. Ignore collisions. Now, once we hit the space bar, we're going to create this grenade. And then we want to store this grenade right here. This is the grenade that we're actually creating. This is an instance of this blueprint class. And we want to be able to change some variables in there. So we're going to need to make a reference to this. And the way we do that is by coming right over this pin, right-clicking on it, and promoting it to a variable. And now we're going to call this grenade reference. So now we have access to the grenade that we just created. And what we want to do here is now that it's created, right, this is the initial part that we're, this is basically pulling the pin out of the grenade, right? Now we want to be able to hold this for as long as we want until we decide to throw it. So I'm going to script this logic. I think I'll do it right here in the player character. And I'm going to make a timeline. And this is basically the same thing as a tick. So I'll just call this pin pulled. And what we're going to do here is we're going to play this timeline and this thing runs basically on tick off of this update here this is just like creating a tick but the thing I like about timelines is you can stop them so that's going to be very important when we make this grenade once we throw it I don't want this timeline to keep running so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the grenade blueprint and I'm going to create a variable right over here and this is going to be called was released and I'm gonna leave that as a boolean so if you compile it you'll see the default value is gonna be false and that's what we want we want it to be false but what I'm gonna have this thing do is I'm gonna drag this out hold alt because I wanna set this to be true at some point right and I'm gonna go back into the player character now that we have this variable, I'm going to say get it. So type in get was released. 
sorry, not get set. Set was released. So what we want to do here is after a certain point, whenever we release the grenade, we want to set this variable to be true because then we're going to script some functionality in the grenade blueprint over here once this becomes true. So how are we going to do that? Off of this update pin, we're going to drag off and release and type in branch. So now we have this condition that we're going to be setting. And what we want to check for is, was our grenade released at all? If the grenade was released, then we want it to explode. If it wasn't released, we don't want to do anything. So this is what's going to determine whether or not the grenade explodes after a certain amount of time. And what we're going to do here is once we release it, we're going to set this, val this variable in the grenade blueprint to be released so that we can then script some functionality there to tell it to explode. But if it's not released, we can hold it for as long as we want. So nothing's going to happen with the false. So what is this condition here? We also need this in the player character, however you want to call it. And I'll just say grenade thrown so we can kind of distinguish between the two. And we're going to plug this, drag it out, and just put it right here into this condition. So when the grenade's thrown, we're going to tell the grenade blueprint that it was released. And then we're going to do something off of that. So how are we going to figure out, you know, when is this thrown? Well, if we go all the way back here, with the spacebar pressed, we script, we form the grenade, we get a reference to it by storing this as a variable here, we activate this, and this is going to constantly check to see have we thrown it, have we thrown it. When do you want it to be thrown? Well, the original poster wanted it to be thrown with the release of a button. So we can go from here, drag out, hit Alt, and then say when this is released, we're going to set grenade thrown to true. So now, this timeline is going to keep executing and keep asking, was this thrown? The second we release, this variable is going to change to be true, and it'll be allowed to execute through this branch and go into the actual grenade that we just created and set its variable for was it released, and then we can script some logic off of that. So we want this timeline to constantly run. So we're going to have this come in here, double click, and just have it loop. And to be honest, I'm not really sure if we need it to loop or if it's just going to keep going once we hit play, but I'm just going to tell it to loop anyway and we'll stop it when we need to. You may or may not need to do that. Okay, so now once it's thrown and we do all of this, we don't want this timeline to keep going. So what I'm going to do is create a custom event. So I'm going to right click here, type in custom event, and there we go. And I'm just going to call this stop. I'm going to move this here and plug this into the timeline. So that'll stop our timeline once we've thrown the grenade. And now we have to call that event over here. So drag off this pin and say call stop. So now once we've thrown the grenade, it's going to change this variable within the grenade blueprint. And then it's going to stop this timeline so we don't waste resources running this over and over and over again when we don't have any more grenades. So now we're going to go into the grenade blueprint. Now that this thing has been changed from false to true, we can script some logic off of that. So I actually don't need this here. So off of event begin play, as soon as the grenade gets formed, right, that's when this node executes. But we really don't want on event begin play. What we would prefer is to have another custom event. and I'm going to call this Throne. This way we can actually tell it when to do something. Not just when it gets created on this event begin play, but we're going to tell it when to use this execution. So we're going to have this come by, 
and this is going to do a delay and this delay is going to be however long you want the grenade to not explode after you've thrown it so we'll just say two seconds for now and then after that let's see add no not that I'll just say destroy actor we'll make this simple so this is going to delete our grenade. And just to make sure this is working, right before we destroy it, I'm going to say print. And it'll say explode. So you can put in whatever kind of particle effects or whatever you want in between here and there. And then you destroy your actor. And now that I think about it, we may not even need this um, was released boolean here. So I'm going to delete it. So we'll go back into the player character. Now that I've deleted this, it's all grayed out, doesn't know what to do, we'll delete it here. And we'll just make this easy and say from here we will call throne. This way we save ourselves a variable. So now what this is saying we zoom out a little bit. When you hit the spacebar, you're going to spawn the grenade at the player's location. Then we're going to store that grenade as a variable right here. We're going to play this timeline, which is going to continuously check and see if the grenade has been thrown. If it's been thrown, we're going to go into the grenade blueprint, call this execution here thrown, which if we remember, it's going to do this. It's going to start this delay, then it's going to print explode, and then it's going to destroy the grenade. And finally, we're going to stop our timeline so we don't waste resources. So we're going to call this event, which will come here, and execute this to stop. And that's going to happen when we release the spacebar and this grenade thrown becomes true. So let's see how this is going to work now. Could not find the function thrown from thrown. That's odd. Oh, I think because we have to compile this. And now it should work. There we go. All right, little hiccup. Now we're going to play. And let's see how this works. So this first cube here is me. I made this for another tutorial for some other stuff. So don't worry about that. Now I'm going to hit spacebar. And I'm holding spacebar down. Now you see that little ball? That's our grenade. And now I'm going to release the spacebar. It's going to wait two seconds. Print explode. And now it's gone. Alright, so I hope that helped the original poster. Um, that's how you can kind of create these grenades and have them explode, you know, when you want after you've actually thrown them. You can obviously make this a lot fancier and put in all kinds of special effects and timers and things like that, but for the basic functionality, spacebar, release, and there it goes. Alright, hope this helps.